Well, I'm watching the tube on a Sunday night. Wait, say Working this one. myself to a bit. Oh, man. Sitting oh, in dying of boredom. Same old Cause shit. I'm tired of the same old shit. Man. Well, I'm the dial higher around wow, channel yeah. 33. That's what I found. Lo and behold, there's yes, a new show. Know. It's called oh, Hey, Fairy TV. TV. Oh, okay. Yeah. Second verse. It's second got verse. music. Uh, it's got yeah. Ron Bay's too. Yeah. Helpful yeah. household hints. Never was a show like it, and there ain't been one since. Well, 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 well now I've got something to do every Sunday evening. Tune in to channel 33 for that Verity TV. Good evening, children. Welcome to That's Very Television. Broadcasting live from the edge of civilization here in the parking lot of ACTV in South Austin. It's TV TV. I'm Uncle Ron. Welcome to the show. And here's our host, Bijou Mary. Hi, everybody. Hey. Wow, what a gorgeous audience we have this evening. And Gee, your house is pretty nice too, but before the next show, would you vacuum that cat hair? Do what you can. Well, this is TV TV, and it's our third show, and you might have seen a little segment about us yesterday. Now, I guess it would have been Friday on the Today Show, and uh, we're going to be on West 57th. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. In fact, the telegrams have been flooding in. Here's what Bush wrote. He said, I watch your show, Austin Town Limits, on KLUT Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. Oh, look what Quail has to say. Every time your show comes on, I pray. Then I, <laughs> then I gather my family of Bushmen around and I ask, do I enjoy this? <laughs> oh, and from Dukakis. Dukakis says, you make me laugh. <laughs> so, we hope, we hope you make you laugh. And let's have a big hand for all the people behind the scenes. You can't see them. They're on camera. They're in the, they're in the production booth. They did this great set. And uh, it's going to be another real good show. And I really appreciate the audience coming out like this because they were smart enough to write in advance to get tickets, and if you need tickets to come here and be part of our audience, you just write TV TV PO Box 4783-78756, and come on down for the fun. All right. All right, that's it. <laughs> you really need to get rid of those cat hairs. Oh, hi, I'm Bijou. That's French for I'm hungry. I got a weight problem. I can't wait to eat. <laughs> I have an eating disorder. Dessert first, then maybe I'll get out of bed. <laughs> my home entertainment center consists of my mouth. Uh, I guess they visited me at my home. But anyway, um, you know, people say they want their cake and eat it too. Not me. I just want to eat it. Do you know? There are actually people who walk by the free cheese samples at Safeway. No. <laughs> how? 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 Well, I started working out. I got this job delivering pizzas. No. Oh. No, actually, I started going to this fitness gym. You know, you should see these men at this fitness gym. You know, they have these biceps. They are so big that their elbows will never again touch their bodies, which is really useful for those keg parties. <laughs> you know, they say, go to a fitness gym if you want to meet a man. <laughs> oh, with these men, your love would be superfluous. <laughs> you know, why? Why do men think women like big biceps? What bicep has ever consoled a woman? 
<laughs> what bicep has ever brought a woman to climax? Oh! <laughs> no! Women like to nest. They like to cuddle and put their head on a man's arm and shoulder. But with these muscle men, it's like laying your head on a shot put. <laughs> See, I got this theory. You know these guys, they work out, they work out. They work out this area up here because they're saying, look up here, look at this. Don't look at this. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> so Flash, what have you been up to? Well, um, I just made a television appearance last night on uh, Window to Austin. It's a monthly uh, live TV show and that was a lot of fun. And uh, pretty much right now I'm just doing live appearances. Uh, on TV here in Austin. You know, I find it a lot more exciting, you know, dealing with a nice little studio audience like this. Yeah, good folks. And uh, Ron, I hear you were at an incredible wild party, and we'll have a little bit more about this party later in the show. Yeah, it was, it was really wild. Uh, we uh, drank beer, we talked to girls, and uh, we watched a slideshow. On a slide. That <laughs> 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 sounds pretty wild. Uh, it was a 12-footer. Yeah. <laughs> well, later on the show, we want to have uh, we're going to have Mary Brooks, a musician, on. We're going to have yeah! a stand-up right. comedian. <laughs> we have stand-up comedian Tom Mahoney. Yeah. And we'll be yeah. yeah. Let's hear it from Tom. He's a real funny man. Nice guy too. Also, later on, we're going to be talking to Jamie Lipman, who has lit up Austin in an incredible way. We'll be yeah. learning about that. Yeah. So, uh, as you know, Christmas is coming, and uh, TV, TV being uh, on top of things, went shopping, and we thought you viewers at home might be interested in this gift for some of your friends. What it is, is it's a magic handle, and it's for people who, for whatever reason, don't. Oh want to put their hands around a can. I mean, how distasteful, right? So they have come up with this uh, new invention. and we're, It's it's really a great idea. There. Oh, look at that. Isn't that great? <laughs> see, <laughs> see, uh, see, you never again have to have your hands on a clammy can. I think it's fantastic. You can get me one. I know I'd appreciate it. Well, right now, TV TV in its incredible investigative journalistic feat is now going to go deep into the bowels of the state capitol to see what its women's restroom looks like. Let's take a look. From the basement of the state capitol, we're about ready to visit the ladies' room. Although that line said ladies, we see now that it's become a woman's restroom. Here we are. We're entering. And the first area is the lounge area. And you'll see that they have your basic vinyl brown and black furniture. Very tasteful. And the generic brown carpeting with extensive uh, stains on the floor. And you'll notice that uh, this is very nice. You'll see how the black and the brown is picked up here in the ash container. You see how they've picked up that brown and that black? And here's your basic state employee lounging around in the middle of her workday, which is why they built this room. Oh, here's another nice touch. This is a locked door. Behind it, they have several state employees who are not doing their job and are bad, bad, bad. And they put them behind this door and lock them up and collect them at the end of the month, at which time they don't give them to a paycheck. Here we are, we're coming into the actual restroom area. You'll see that this is all done and the walls are in a white tile. You have your acoustic paneling so they can't hear people scream because they're so frustrated. And then they have the basic, once again, almost a beige, possibly a, a pink tone tiles. And uh, a nice factor in this restroom is the view. Now if you were to open these blinds, which I am not 12 feet tall, I can't. If you'll notice the cord is way up there, which means we are unable at all times to see this fantastic view, which is, oh, look at that, a cement wall. We think of everything here. Now, the really great feature about the state restrooms is that it is definitely has the wheelchair person in mind. You'll notice the soap dispenser. It's at the height for someone in a wheelchair. They also have the sink facilities for someone in a wheelchair. They do have your basic basic pink glop soap and your towels are of the white semi-industrial strength. You'll notice there is no graffiti here, none anywhere. They have uh, 
four stalls, one for wheelchair. Now this we haven't seen so far. Now gentlemen, I think you'll find this very fascinating. This is in women's restrooms. Have you ever seen this? Do you know what this is? Can you guess what this is? No, this is not a new wearing apparel. This is called a toilet seat cover. And what you do, hopefully better than that, what you do, you'll notice, what you do is you, you, you write the company and you ask that they make these out of stronger paper. But if you do get one to work, this is what you do with it. And then you have to rip out that center. And the reason that this is made is because as we all know, women can get pregnant from sitting on toilet seat covers. So they have very thoughtfully made these toilet seat covers so we don't get pregnant. Let's check our toilet paper strength here. Tisk, tisk, tisk. It's your old basic one ply. Now this is an interesting little touch. A little rack here. I suppose this is to hang your purse on, which is really very thoughtful because it's rather disgusting, although not in this bathroom, some of the floors. This is a clean floor. So ladies, you can just hang your purse here. And yes, you see that all important lock. Okay? Now we do have supplies. In fact, I would recommend if you work downtown women and it's that time of month, you rush over to the state capitol. What a bargain. Ten cents, either one. I see no condoms. And uh, they have this little counter where you can put your parcels and a long mirror. And if you stand back far enough, you can check. Well, you can check just below your knees. You will never know what your shoes and nylons look like. They have a, their own temperature control. Probably not operational, I suspect. Well, I think that's it here in the basement of the state capitol. And now a word from our newest sponsor. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. Uncle Ron here with a word from Farina. I know a lot of you have those special free friends at home. Now, Farina has been providing nutritious feeds for those cats, dogs, for many years. Farina dog chow, Farina guana chow, Farina toad chow. We have now brought you Farina rat chow. For that discriminating rat. After exhaustive tests in the gutters of New York, Buenos Aires, and Calcutta, our folks at Farina have come up with this finest blend of garbage, trash, refuse, effluvium, and something else that I can't read. For your little furry friend, watch this. Okay, go after it, buddy. There you go. See that little guy go after it? Incredible. This formula has been developed through exhaustive tests at the National Institute of Mental Health where rats have chosen our product two to one over the government brand developed at the Microbial Research and Chemical Warehouse Division. It also enjoys the endorsement of Ben, the star of the Russian Rat Ballet. So remember, for the finest in rat cuisine, Farina Rat Chow. I know I feed all my rats Farina Rat Chow. I, now I know you will too. Well. Right now, let's have a big hand for this evening's musician. It's Mary Brooks. And, um, yeah. 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 take it away, Mary.
Thank you. October 25th. Thanks, Mary. Right. Well, those of you who are regular followers of TV, TV know we always have a household hint. And this evening I thought I would discuss hair. Gum in the hair happens to you all the time, okay? This is probably what you look like when you're making fettuccine, your hands are busy, the phone rings, what do you do? You put it in your hair. But how do you get the gum out of your hair? Well, I've heard that ice cubes work, so let's see. Do you see this gum coming out? Oh, a little bit. Maybe ice cubes work. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. I've also heard that peanut butter works. Let's see how that works. Well, if it gets the gum out, that's the main thing, right? Uh, I'd say go with the ice cubes, ladies. I don't know. What do you think? Go with the ice cubes. Ice cubes. I also wanted to point out one other thing. You know, earlier in the show we got this little mug for our can. Watch what happens when I drink. <laughs> so, if, if you do buy this for someone, you might want to point out that apparently you have to align the handle with the little thing in the can or otherwise. <laughs> so, so uh, when you give it, be sure to have that little warning on it. Now, we have a stand-up comic, a real stand-up comic called Tom Mahoney. He's, uh, yeah. with, he's with the improv group at the Laugh Stop. He's also sometimes on KLBJ AM radio doing his uh, movie trivia contest, always fun. And let's have a big hand again for Tom Mahoney. Yeah. Hey, it's great to be here. It's great to be here. I love you. I love you people. I love playing parking lots. It's what I do best, really. I swear to God. And I know, I know there's going to be a lot of people watching tonight because community court work session was on right before this program, and that's a great lead-in. I know it is. Cosby and that show, I think, are the two big hits this uh, week, and this one too. You're great. I love you. I love you, people. I, uh, I'm not originally any uh, any Yankees in the uh, studio audience there tonight. Yeah, it's a full of Yankees tonight. Uh, I'm not originally from Texas. I'm up from up north, but I wanted to I wanted to be a Texan when I moved down here. So. So I, I bought the boots, you know, I bought the hat, I, you know, and I got a good job, ran my credit up to the limits, <laughs> lost my job, started drinking, made some unwise investments, <laughs> declared bankruptcy, I'm a Texan, all right, all right, all right. I went to, went to my bank uh, the other day and it said, today's date is Tuesday, October 14th. Today's name for the bank is... <laughs> I love you. I love you, people. Have I told you that? I mean it. Damn it, I mean it. I don't know. When I was growing up, I, I grew up in, in the Midwest, and I was kind of a rebel. Can you imagine that? Be, me, a rebel. Can you picture it? Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, I was soliciting audience response, okay? Those of you at home can join in on this. I was kind of a rebel, but yet I was kind of a nerd, if you can picture that. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was like a rebel nerd. If you could, you know, I'd get mad at my parents, slam the door to my room, damn it, mom, dad, you just don't understand me. And then I'd crank the carpenters on the stereo. <laughs> We've only just begun. Yeah, that's the kind of kid I was. I, when, I, when I went to high school, I wanted to lose that rebel nerd image. I was tired of people saying, there's a rebel, rebel without a car. <laughs> that's how I was, a rebel without a car. The audience turns, and I wanted to lose that image, so I started hanging out with the drug crowd. I know that's it's kind of scary. I started hanging out with the drug crowd, but I could never really get accepted because that roach clip looked so stupid in my plastic pocket protector. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't make the transition there. I just couldn't make the transition. As a rebel nerd, I had a, a beautiful uh, uh, automobile when I was growing up, a Corvair. Oh, what a piece of machinery this is. huh? And people were always fixing me up with dates, and you know the typical dating setup, a guy calls you up and says, says, uh, Tom, I fixed you up with this girl, and ooh, is she young and good looking. <laughs> you know, she's a lot of fun, but she's kind of heavy. I think, you know, I'd pull up in my mighty Corvair. I knew we were in trouble because there were no stairs leading up to the house. There was only an inclined plane and a series of pulleys and chain hoists. It was incredible. Horrible. This girl came out, and I thought, that girl, my car, <laughs> two trips. 
It was a big woman. It was a big woman. Are you with me on this? Are you? I mean, you know, to me, I don't have anything against, I don't have anything against fat girls. To me, uh, I believe a fat girl is like a moped. They're both fun to ride until your friends find out about it, you know, but, oh, oh, they're with me. Yeah, they love me, but what could I do? I mean, this girl was, she was way beyond fat. She had sweat stains on her purse. <laughs> oh, scary, scary image. Well, what could I do? I greased her up, slid her in the back seat of my Corvair, right? And we're doing a wheelie to the drive-in. It was incredible. And uh, we got there, and she starts drinking slow gin, and then she starts erupting like Vesuvius in the back seat. And I think, hey, my life's over. I'm here with this huge whale of a woman. She's barfing. I mean, she was really erupting all over the place. We looked like one of those orange drink machines from the outside. You, can you picture that? No, you can't picture that. Okay. I thought, this is it. My life's over. And then a voice came to me. I began to pray, and a voice came to me. Snack bar closes in 10 minutes. And she was gone. And the rebel nerd was free. Thank you. My name's Tom Mahoney. Good night. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. is on and I saw no some of you are probably thinking about changing those stations hey don't bother we've done it for you <laughs> one right get some extra no. book trip always be somebody singing in the blue and we have another new sponsor this evening. Everybody's jumping on the TV TV bandwagon. Word from our newest sponsor. Hello there. Welcome to our newest bookstore in town, the Bull and Bush Adult Bookstore. We have the finest in erotic literature for you, such as uh, this hot little number here. Uh, now we uh, we can't show you the title here on TV. The FCC gets all uptight about that, and uh, I can't say it, but. Uh, uh, believe me, it's a good one. And uh, now one for you Longhorn fans here. Uh, we got one special for you, an Austin favorite. Bevo's Bordello. Yeah. yeah. Good story in there. And don't forget, and not forget you ladies either, because uh, it's an equal opportunity adult bookstore. Men and women both, ladies and gentlemen, can go in. And uh, one good instructional erotic literature for the ladies is uh, get to know your cucumber. Uh, now this is a uh, fine, uh, fine tradition that goes back to the Kama Sutra and the ancient Greeks. And uh, uh, don't forget our adult toys. We've got some of the uh, largest selection of adult toys in Austin. But we can't show them to you. But uh, come on down to the Bull and Bush Bookstore and you'll see everything. Just uh, two stoplights past 183 and just look for the picket signs and that's where you'll find us. Thank you. Well, here's the newest development in that magic handle. So uh, you might not want to give this to anybody. Well, right now we're going to have a musical segment from our, uh, our one-man band, Flash Burns. Uh, yeah! it's, a, it's the big sound from the small band. You ready, Flash? All right, take it away. Alright everybody, I'm Flash Burns. It's just a little song called Fragile. It's about those uh, relationships we get ourselves into.
pain Very fragile This thing we share We must handle This thing we care Every day we're working Working hard Keep it working While we're apart Into tension Special care Always be careful This thing we share Very fragile 